we're back and we're literally three months away from the release of the Quest 3 and despite the announcement our concrete spec knowledge is limited and even that's generous. We know next to nothing about the displays or the chip so it's difficult to gauge the actual power increase but using deduction and in-depth research we're going to take the base claim of two times the power and see what this means in real terms. Stick around as I, d -Sacks, take you deep into the nerd zone. So we know thanks to the one and only sadly it's Bradley the chip details despite it not being officially released by Meta or by Qualcomm. You can see the details here and these are numbers based on the equivalent chip that's been used in phones and tablets, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So despite some reports of way higher teraflop numbers for the GPU, we know it'll be two times the Quest 2 teraflop number after throttling to manage thermals and give an acceptable battery life. It's built using the latest 4 nanometer process and based on supply chain insight looks to be manufactured by Samsung with USB 4 and Wi-Fi 7 support. Now what does this mean? Well the XR2 from the Quest 2 was built on the 7 nanometer process so this means a significant increase in power efficiency, transistor density and speed. So yes, it's more powerful, but it also uses less energy to be more powerful, meaning further power gain without sacrificing battery life on the Quest 3, which Boz himself said is about the same as the Quest 2. Now let's take a look at the numbers from both generations. Firstly, that two times marketing claim. We don't know if this is referring to two times at the Quest 2 full capacity, after the latest update with those big clock speed increases, or based on the Quest 2's launch performance, which is far more throttled. However, I'm betting it's based on its full capacity, purely down to the informal claims from Jason Rubin and Boz that the new headset is 2 to 2.5 times the power of the Quest 2, so I think they made the announcement video slightly more conservative. They already talked about upscaling older games, I think it's very likely Quest 2 games will be able to run at native Quest 3 resolution. Not a lot of people realise that Quest 2 games don't run at full res on the headset, its LCD got a lot of stick and they really didn't have the power to take full potential of it. Its colour and black levels aren't the best, but that's another conversation and hopefully improved in the Quest 3, but the resolution was more than acceptable. Anyone that's played PC VR with a powerful PC on Quest 2, punch the render resolution as high as you can. I first did this on Half-Life 2 and was blown away by how crispy the display is capable of looking. I think the Quest is going to blow a lot of people away rendering at native res for games like Population 1 and Walking Dead. We saw with the recent V55 performance update covered in my last video here, they've been able to increase render resolution for certain games, showing examples of Beat Saber and Saints and Sinners. If that increase can be done with a 20% clock increase, native resolution is easily achievable, with headroom to increase assets too. So then the question is, are we just going to see Quest 2 graphics at higher res and maybe some improved assets and draw distances? Last gen game for Quest 2 this is absolutely the expectation, but then the Quest 2 is no slouch, we're only just seeing its potential this year. Let's take a look at the recent gaming showcase which made a point of showing only games which will be running on the Quest 2, and in fact, bar Ghostbusters and a couple of pre-rendered trailers, all footage shown was captured running on Quest 2. It shows how far we've come and matches up with the typical console cycles where launch date releases look very different to what developers put out at the end of the console's life. One strong example is GTA 3 versus GTA San Andreas, the difference in scope on the same console is insane. It takes time for developers to get used to platforms, limitations and optimizations, and the Quest 2 isn't particularly old versus console lifespan. So we're seeing a lot of great looking games coming through, even outside of the gaming showcase gems, we recently had Hubris, which was a big surprise and I don't think many thought was actually possible for current gen standalone. And of course the gold standard Red Matter 2, which everyone agrees looks incredible and is using ray trace reflections, downscaled metahumans, highly detailed large scale areas. But for Quest 3, what real terms equivalent should we see? People like to say Quest 2 is PS2 level which isn't the case at all. I think some games certainly look worse than others, but we're absolutely seeing PS3 or Xbox 360 fidelity, but with less than that level on the effects, lighting and shadows, for example. To understand why VR is so difficult to develop for, here is what consoles or flatland games need to render for PS3, Xbox 360 era as minimums. One image. 30 frames per second, 720p resolution, that's 920,000 pixels. The VR render requirements, two images, one per eye, 72 to 90 frames per second, and 1285 by 1440 resolution, that's 1.85 million pixels, times two. These minimums require insane optimization and compared to their console counterparts are particularly restrictive. So if we're getting bullet storm on Quest 2, with the latest rendering tech, these magician-like developers are really cracking that console era now. To hit the minimums of that era, you effectively need three times the frame rate at double the resolution multiplied by 2. So there's no wonder the 1.2 to 1.3 teraflops of the Quest 2 is seeing games like Bulletstorm which came from consoles looking at 240 gigaflops of power. So at two times that level of performance of Quest 3 we shouldn't be hitting the PS4, Xbox One generation's performance just yet. Despite the teraflops of the Adreno 740 exceeding the PS4 on paper, 1.84 teraflops of PS4 versus the expected 2.4 to 2.6 teraflops of the Quest 3. Now where am I going with this? Well based on the above, what's the Quest 3 
3 equivalent. It looks like the Quest 3 equivalent is a docked switch. Let me explain. It should be hitting 500 gigaflop level of console graphics, but with 90 frames, double resolution, and two images for each lens. So graphical ability akin to Switch, but sharper. Let's think about the Switch's game library for a moment. Surely this confirms San Andreas will be a Quest 3 exclusive? You're welcome, ladies and gents. I'll take that subscription now. So what are the best looking games on Switch? Let's get a taste of the level of fidelity we'll see. Metroid Prime Remaster is a more recent offering which had my jaw dropping at its visuals, which really showcased impressive world building and improved on the original, which was already a gorgeous game. Doom Remake. They said it wouldn't be possible, and while a little blurry, double the resolution on Quest 3, the crazy mothers managed it. Crisis Remastered, just for the can it run Crisis meme. This means Quest 3 could run Crisis, the remastered version too. Alien Isolation, a game everyone has been wanting for the standalone platform since the original Quest. It would be possible. And Skyrim, one of the most popular games ever made. It could make one last ride on the Quest 3. We can see the fidelity increase is exciting, but we also have to understand the scope changes, as evidenced with Asgard's Wrath 2, which all the footage shown was from Quest 2, but expect larger draw distances on Quest 3 with its increased RAM capacity, 8 to 12 gigabytes unconfirmed as yet. There are other factors beyond GPU like CPU, memory RAM and storage speed too, but I expect them to be of a similar level increase over the Switch to at least exceed its abilities at the VR minimums mentioned. So while I previously talked about Quest 3 hitting the original PSVR levels, I need to walk back a little on that statement and say we're just shy of this at the moment, but very close. With rendering tech improvements and dynamic resolution scaling, as we get further into the Quest 3 lifespan and potentially see updates improving performance on the new headset, much like we have multiple times on Quest 2, it really is exciting to think of the headset standalone ability in real terms. So please, let me know your own thoughts below. Am I talking nonsense or do my maths and numbers work out? What Switch level games would you like to see on the Quest 3? If you like my speculations and insights, make sure to like this video and if you want to see more and keep up to date on all the latest news, hit subscribe and I'll see you on the other side.